A Murder at the End of the World, Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 2, The Silver Doe. Another episode, uh, another episode I love. Spoilers for these first two episodes. So, yeah. Uh, Darby goes to explain that, you know, Bill has died, and I, I like the detail that you know the guy working there he's he's a local so his english is not perfect he he keeps you know going back to to like icelandic and yeah so throughout the episode they're still doing the the flashback thing and it continues to be effective we see her as like a kid going along to which you know we already knew but the the yeah, uh, the new element is that there's an actress playing Kid Darby, and yeah, she's, you know, she doesn't have a huge amount of screen time, but she's really good for, you know, yeah, the the time that she, she has, and the, yeah, so, you know, um, they say that Bill apparently died of an overdose of Morphing? Ugh. Oh, he binged too much Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It happens. Killer guitar riff. Anyway. And, yeah. You know, they think, oh, it's an accidental overdose or maybe a suicide or something. And Darby is not buying it. And, yeah. You know, we've, we haven't seen Darby this upset before. You know, keeping in mind in episode one, there was a flashback where someone had a gun and might shoot her. But, the, you know, that didn't particularly rattle her, but this really gets to her. You know, he was one of the few people that got close to her. And... See. Yeah, uh, Ava, the the wife of of Todd, the head of security. You know, she's trying to to help, and she, you know, she is basically doing the the like textbook kind of thing. You know, I'm sorry for your loss. Make sure you can try to get some sleep. And this is this is the second episode in a row, two two for two, where someone gives Darby sleeping pills. I, I have to wonder if that's, like, maybe they're trying to comment on, like, an over-reliance on self-medicating. Because both of these times, it's not that, oh, you know, she can just never sleep. You know, I've, yeah. If, you know, your, your doctor can prescribe sleeping pills if there's a lot of times where you just can't seem to sleep but you know these in both cases she was given someone else's sleeping pills and then we have the um, let's see. right the the thing of you know yeah she says I'm I'm not in a rush and, you know, this time she's even got the, the gloves on, you know, she's completely ready for the, and, you know, the, the, one of the, one of the cops is like, shouldn't you be in school? And she's like, shouldn't you? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, that's that snark that she's, yeah. And... Yeah, and, and, you know, she goes through the halls of the, the high school, and this one girl, like, looks towards her, and her boyfriend grabs her by the throat and, and like, forces a kiss. So, yeah, there's definitely a theme of misogynistic violence of this kind of possessive behavior men feeling entitled to, to women. And, by the way, again, when I, when I say she and her, 
I'm, I'm going to try to only make that when I'm referring to Darby. I am aware that Emma Corrine goes by they, them. So I'm going to do my best to, to remember and, and, you know, I certainly intend to respect that. By the way, Emma Corrine went from playing, you know, she's here, she's playing like someone solving murders that people think, oh, that wasn't really a murder or they can't find out who did it. I'm just saying she before this she played the the you know Lady Diana who I'm not saying I'm just saying a number of people think that that was actually a murder so I don't know maybe maybe Corinne is like drawn to this sort of like you know maybe this person was murdered even though some people don't Think so. I'm not going to get into to conspiracy theory territory. And then we have the. Um, what on earth did I. Run? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing that Darby's dad does not like, you know. Uh, uh, if she's you know working with he he is fine with her joining in on you know this the the um, coroner kind of thing co coronoring and yeah she went from coronation to coronoring and they I'm sorry they went from coronation to coronoring and it's new to me I'm sorry I'm working on it. I do have an ADHD diagnosis. I struggle to learn new things. Uh, the the yeah the one thing that Darby's dad does not like for Darby to to do is when she says Darby she says you know is it ever fast enough because this victim did know she was about to die you know he says no we we don't do that that's not professional you know just the fact that he says that shows it's not that he's just completely careless about you know he, he is fine with Darby joining as long as she's professional and yeah so you know he found she, she's looking into the the earring and meets Bill via the the online was it Reddit? It looked like Reddit, but it went by kind of fast. And let's see. Yeah, I'm back in the present. Lee gives her a, a comforting hug. And yeah, Dar Darby definitely does not believe that it's murder. And Andy is reluctant to let anyone go home, which you know he what he says makes sense for his character but it does feel like yeah i i don't know you know this some of these you know murder mystery stories have multiple murders not all of them but i i have to wonder if he either is the killer or he is just comfortable with killing or you know with with someone else being a killer but at the same time, I can believe that he simply does not think that this was a murder. And Darby forces the the toilet to overflow to to get past the 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 person in charge, which reminds me of when Jessica Jones did. Is that a th I I don't watch that much like current stuff maybe that is just like a thing of like somebody decided this is a way that a young woman can force someone with some authority to listen to her i i could i could live with that it's it's yeah i feel bad for the for the people who have to who have to deal with it obviously but yeah for for so long women didn't have very much power at all and yeah, she encodes the decoder ring and yeah, you know, notes it's the wrong arm. If 
Bill had fallen off the wagon and was using again. <laughs> I like that Ray's like, when you say user, do you mean operating heavy equipment or a computer? Uh, you know, the the this was clearly someone else injecting the the morphine. And yeah, gloves also very unusual for you know, if you're giving yourself an injection, why would you bother with gloves? Especially if you think that it's going to be the last, you know, if you think it's going to kill you, you know, why Why on earth would you bother with, with that? And, yeah, very interesting that Lee goes to, to look at the body, and she claims afterwards, oh, you know, I, I had to see for myself. But, yeah, it definitely did look very very interesting that it seemed like there might be something off there and let's see we have the um, oh did i skip the part where hmm. oh right yeah the the um, yeah, I like the 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 first time that Bill and she like directly interact. The, you know, she she posts the thing, and then he contacts her directly. I guess DM. He slides into her DMs. Is that what the kids are calling it these days? And you know, yeah, there's a little bit of back and forth. And at first, he's like, "This is nothing," you know, and she gives a little more. And then she says, the dead speak to me. You know, and as soon as she sent it, she's like, oh, fuck, this, that, you know. And, yeah, he sends a, a link, and they start, you know, webcam chatting, which, yeah, you know, that's the kind of thing that's either going to be like, okay, too much internet for one day, I have time to touch grass, or you're going to be like, interesting. And they are very charming together. Like, there's genuine chemistry between the, the actors and characters. And... Yeah, I, right, I like the moment where it looks like Lee might have spotted Darby and Darby hides, like... And... Let's see, we have the... Yeah, uh, Martin explains that Ray co-wrote the the film and you know he makes the point that it's true that an AI is not an artist but it is a tool for an artist and yes Andy I when I said AI I meant alternative not artificial and the let's see yeah one of them makes the point it, it was something along the lines of AI will collaborate with all future artists or something like you know yeah and, yeah, I really appreciate that both sides are given, you know, because it is a complicated issue. It is the rare case where both sides have an, an argument. And it's not just, you know, well, on one side, you know, the left say we should treat people with humanity and dignity. And the right say, you know, let's burn the entire planet to the ground. Let's make sure people suffer as much as possible. And... Nobody should have civil rights other than they. I don't know. It's difficult to say. You know, both sides. But, you know, with AI, yeah, you know, it's... There is a threat to, to job security and to, yeah, actual artists and to the, the soul of the art. But it can also be a very useful tool. And... <laughs> Yeah, um, Darby points out, this is my 57th crime scene, you know, and yeah, I wasn't surprised that she confronted Lee, I did expect that it would be more confrontational, but she did say, you know, why did you go to see him, let's see, and, and she's, she delivers the, the classic line, I believe the killer is someone in this very room. You know, just yeah. I I see you. Very nicely done. That's that's a that's a 
an old standby for this sort of thing. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, like, Andy and, and some of the others are like, it's very rude to talk in the theater. And, yeah, I, I like, you know, Lee is like, you know, just don't get caught. And I know it's not supposed to come across as that, but it did kind of make me chuckle at, like, your favorite part of Darby's book was the part where you mentioned where she mentioned you that's a that seems a little a little bit arrogant but I know that's not what she's you know, she's saying I encourage you please use my hack again this time try not opening every single door around though and you know maybe, maybe that's it maybe she still feels bad about those all those car doors car car hole doors that's it and yeah she she lights up a joint it really do be a doobie and <laughs> we see her in in school where she's supposed to be taking a test is there even one scene in american media where someone's like in school supposed to be taking a test and there's literally nothing else going on. I feel like there's always, there, there's, you know, they're preoccupied, they're cheating, there's, they, they get pulled out of class for something, you know, there's always something. I don't know, I just, I feel like, I, I remember taking tests, and, you know, exams. I thought they were stressful enough without any other, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, she she finally explains to Bill what she means by the, the dead talk to me. You know, the silence of the dead compels her. And I like the detail that she, you know, she's microwaving food. And it's very obvious this is not the first time, you know, that's... Which, no shame. That's... I, I very rarely do more than put food inside a, a microwave or a regular oven. So, but, yeah, that is... Again, it it really fits the character, and he he explains why he likes hacking and says Darby is not hackable. I like the little moments where it's clear that they're charming each other, and yeah, she calls and it's like it's like three a.m. You know, he's he like he answered it expecting to be told that there's like a fire or something you know just like hey i i you know i can see your house from here looks like you're on fire you may want to get on that you know it's like don't wake me for for just yeah and let's see yeah and and you know he offers to drive her and that does become that's that's a little too much for her right now so yeah, she said, you know, oh, I, I actually have to get some sleep. I'll, I'll call you later. And, you know, when she doesn't call, he calls, which I'm not the best at, at, you know, analyzing stuff like this, but I feel like that was the thing. Like, it's the kind of thing where if he doesn't call, she's going to think, oh, I guess he's just not interested or something. Although I don't... I'm not entirely sure if she's thinking of them like romantically or it's just intense emotions because it's the first true friendship she's had. She doesn't seem to get along really well with her peers normally. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, he he says he's going to guide her somewhere, but that it's a mystery. Which again, you know, obviously more exciting than him just telling her and yeah you know she she goes to the the train tracks and she's kinda nervous about it probably because if hypothetically there was a crime taking place there and she was spotted at the scene she might end up talking to a, a police officer who's stroking his, you know, his mustache, 
with the words, I can tie you to the train tracks. And, yeah, you know, suddenly the line disconnects, and, you know, she tries to call, there's a busy signal, and then the lights start blinking in Morse code, wishing her a happy birthday, which, yeah, that's, that's very sweet as a, you know, because, yeah, if, okay, you know, she's not comfortable with them meeting face-to-face -face yet, but this is much more interesting than just sending an e-card or something. Are those still a thing? I remember when those were a thing. And Andy actually did make the the password be the the birthday of a loved one. So that's, yeah. But, you know, they do also... It, it, it is... There are a lot of people who choose to do that. And it is... You know, we, we do need... The story kind of needs Darby to hack in to... See. And yeah, so she sees a couple of people in front of the the door cam, and then someone in a white mask. So that's that's very interesting. That's and and yeah, no wonder that it spooks her. And yeah, the the body is taken away, and we close on her going to a bar. I really appreciate all the tension, like she's she's passing people, and there's like, occasionally, it's like, oh, that's sweet, there's, there's like, a, a mother, you know, playing with her children at night in a bar. Okay, that isn't actually sweet, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope it's just because, like, oh, she just couldn't get a nanny or something, rather than that she thinks it's particularly a good idea to take small children to a place that serves alcohol and probably has a lot of tobacco smoke, whatever, whatever. A lot of the people she passes are like, you know, big men that, you know, it, there's a sense of intimidation. You know, she's not completely comfortable there. And I love the way their faces light up when Bill and Darby see each other in the bar. Yeah, um... Really love this episode. I will try to cover next episode. Let's see. I'm thinking Wednesday. It, as far as I understand, the next episode is going to hit. It's going to premiere uh, Tuesday. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, I don't have a fun sign off for this. So, let's see if I can think. Right. Heading off to my 57th crime scene.